on if you use electricity, which would be everyone, then this is a must-see story. Yeah, meteorologist Paul Gross joins us now to talk about the potential impact of a storm that's literally out of this world, Paul. Yeah, absolutely. Most of us have experienced a power failure after severe storms roll through, but imagine now a type of storm that some say could cut power to the entire area. This is not a tornado and it's not a thunderstorm. It's a solar storm. Our sun, provider of warmth that sustains life on Earth, a living body constantly in motion that looks so calm, but is anything but. Enormous explosions called coronal mass ejections, or CMEs, periodically belch into space with jets of charged particles. If a strong CME is directed toward Earth, then those charged particles interact with our planet's magnetic field to induce currents that can potentially damage satellites, force airlines to reroute flights, and damage power grids. And that's exactly what happened 27 years ago. We had an event in March of 1989 where there was a significant power loss in Quebec. And that's because the storm was intense and directed in that area that it, it, it actually caused the power grids to go offline. To find out if that can happen here, I went to DTE's downtown headquarters for some answers. We operate at lower voltage levels than um, the voltage levels that they operate at in Quebec. Um, the lower the voltage level, the less likely there is of an impact. Um, they also tend to have a lot longer um, transmission lines than what we have, um, and so that allows for more possibility of, uh, of an impact than what we have here in southeast Michigan. Let's say you get a warning of an impending solar storm what can you do to mitigate and even minimize the impact? If a real severe interruption was predicted, we would take precautionary measures to shut down some of the equipment so as to not damage any of the equipment. And as a result of those precautionary measures, once the storm had passed, I feel that we would be able to restore customers within hours. A strong CME's potential national impact caught the attention of our U.S. Senator Gary Peters, who has introduced legislation to prepare the country. Now, specifically, what does your bill provide for? Well, my bill uh, really is, uh, allows agencies to coordinate. All the various agencies that have a, a, a place at the table to make sure that they're coordinating. That would be NOAA, that would be NASA, it would be the Department of Defense, it would be the Department of Homeland Security. And if we're not proactive, if we wait till an event occurs, it's too late and potentially catastrophic for millions of people. Wow. Yeah, all right. Now, here's the wild card in all of this. All of the planning thus far is for the type of massive CME that's like the one that hit Earth in 1859. Telegraph offices actually caught fire, and the northern lights were so bright that people could actually read outside at night. And we don't know if there are bigger events, like once every thousand year events. Those would truly be catastrophic. Oh my gosh, this is fascinating. Thanks yeah. for taking us inside all the planning that's happening. As far as Senator Peters' bill, what's the status of that? Well, this is good news here because Senator Peters told me that he has very strong bipartisan support. It passed unanimous, unanimously out of committee and he's very optimistic it's going to make it to the Senate floor for a vote this fall. Good. Well, we know okay. you'll stay on top of it. You bet. All right, Paul, thank, thank you. Paul. you. Okay.